Good evening, everyone. Our readings for this evening are Psalms 105. The Old Testament is 2 Samuel chapter 11. And the New Testament is Book of Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, to re you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness in our hearts, that we may walk as children of the light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness, that it may be night. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you send forth your spirit, they're created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and forgive our sins, to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And we read Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he's done, his miracles and the judgments he's uttered. O offspring of Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever. For the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number and of little account and strangers in a wandering in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, <clears throat> Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt in fetters, and his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and a ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes whose hearts he had turned to hate his people and deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen, 
They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. The land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of the kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout the country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and locusts came, young locusts without number. They devoured all the vegetation in the land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first issue of their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold, and there was no one among the tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for covering and fire to give them light by night. They asked, and he brought quails. He gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. So God of our earthly pilgrimage, feed your Easter people on the bread of heaven, that we may hunger and thirst for righteousness, until we reach our promised land through Jesus Christ our Lord. And glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. And our Old Testament reading is from the second book of Samuel, chapter 11. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab and his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, that, and David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house, that he saw from the roof a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messages to fetch her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now, she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him, uh, and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance to, of the king's house and with all the servants of the Lord, he did not go down to his own house. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house. David said to Uriah, You've just come in from a journey. Why do you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and the, my lord Joab and the servants of the Lord are camping in an open field. Shall I then go down to my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? As you live, and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day, and on the next day David invited him to eat and drink in his presence, and made him drunk. And in that evening he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of the Lord, but he did not go down to his own house. In the morning, 
David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck and die. As Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew they were valiant warriors. The men of the city came out and fought the Joab, and some of the servants of David among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite was killed as well. Then Joab sent and told David all the news about the fighting, and he instructed the messenger, When you have finished telling the king all the news about the fighting, then, if the Lord's anger rises, and if he says to you, Why did you go so near the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam? Did not a woman throw a, up a millstone on him from the wall, so that he died at Jebez? Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead too. So the messenger went and came and told David all that Joab had sent him to, to tell. The messenger said to David, The men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field, but we drove them back to the entrance of the gate, and then the archers shot at your servants from the wall. Some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, Thus you shall say to Joab, Do not let this matter trouble you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Press your attack on the city and overthrow it, and encourage him. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. And when the morning was over, David sent and brought her into his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. <coughs> Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to your purpose and your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ and forgiveness of our sins. According to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us, you have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose, which you set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And we read the Magnificat, Magnificat together, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, from verse 26 to the end of the chapter. Then the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up 
and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to his chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And he asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its sharer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. And the eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask, does this prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they, and as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop and they, both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in, in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns, until he came to Caesarea. Hear the word of the Lord. So, we trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Last week, I spoke of some people who had walked with God. This evening, I would like to look at the question of how we face the vicissitudes of life. Remember how David was described as, by God as a man after my own heart? <coughs> In the Old Testament reading, <coughs> excuse me, in the Old Testament reading we see David in a moment of relaxation being distracted by a beautiful woman. His army was out beating up the Ammonites, but David had stayed in Jerusalem. While the fighting was going on, David had had his afternoon nap and was at a loose end, wandering around on the roof of the palace. And that is when he fell into temptation. Once he had, had yielded to the temptation, and this had brought on consequences that he couldn't dodge, he devised all sorts of schemes to get around the consequences of his action. action. The end of it was that he had Uriah killed, but the Lord was not pleased, <clears throat> and the baby died. In the New Testament reading gives us the story of Philip, who was focused on the Lord and was walking closely enough to him to be able to hear what he, what was wanted. He was immediately obedient to the Lord's will, and the Lord's will was done. The Ethiopian was led into a deeper relationship with Jesus, and God was pleased with Philip and immediately sent him off on another task that was lined up for him. We can say, well, it was easy for Philip. He was one of Jesus' disciples and had been with the Lord for three years. He was used to listening to Jesus. But let's think about this. Over the centuries, there have been people who have walked very close to the Lord and served him faithfully. Their callings and tasks have seldom been as dramatic as those that I've mentioned. 
but nonetheless important for the kingdom of God. Every soul saved is a matter for rejoicing in heaven. Think of the parable of the lost sheep, and we're able to be part of this, the shepherd who found the lost sheep. When we walk with God, he guides us to where he wants us. All we need to do is to listen, but we mustn't expect to hear a loud halo in our ear. Like Elijah in the cave, it's the still small voice that we need to listen to and to which we need to pay close attention. In my experience, God only speaks once. And in the hurly-burly of life, it's very easy to miss, and we may look back after having taken the wrong path and think, but I had the feeling that I should have done this or that, and not what I did do. The Bible gives us faultless guidance. Although it does not often speak directly into our current situation, it teaches fundamental principles that are universally applicable. The world has changed since the days of Jesus and the Old Testament prophets, but human nature has not. People's reactions to situations now are the same as they were in Old Testament times. And possibly one of the biggest hurdles that we need to overcome is that we like to be independent. We don't take kindly to having people, to having a free hand, uh, sorry, we don't take kindly to not having a free hand to behave as we would like. But when our behavior is not in line with the fundamental principles we see in the Bible, we have to live with the consequences. We have read today how David's behavior, <clears throat> when he was distracted from God, led to adultery and eventually to murder by proxy of the woman's husband. Not all of our actions have such severe outcomes, but one thing the Bible does not promise is that the forgiveness of our sin will include cancelling the consequences of our sin. We must still face the consequences. So, what is the message for us today? The history of the Israelites shows continually uh, how they reminded themselves of God's blessing to them and how he had guided them. The best place to read this is in the Psalms. And as we heard in this evening Psalm, we are encouraged to seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually, remember the wonderful works he's done, his miracles, and the judgment he's uttered. If we can live in ongoing communion with God, then we will be able to hear him and respond to him. But this is not always possible. There are so many demands on our time that it's not always easy to find time to be with God. But are we able to take God into our busy lives as a companion? And in our time off, so to speak, do we forget God for the moment as David did? It is always easy in hindsight to think that we should have done think what we should have done and we are all guilty of becoming distracted. But like Philip, the presence of Jesus was fresh in our lives, it will become easier to follow Jesus. Let me read the baptismal creed. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, and forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours, now and for ever. Amen. <clears throat> so, almighty and everlasting God, you will always 
more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing, to your church, holiness, to the world, peace, to this nation, justice, and to all people, knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say the collect for the day. Lord Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. Set your living bread before us, that feasting around your table, we may be strengthened to continue the work which you call us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We say the collect for peace. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works proceed, give your servants the peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that, free from the fear of our enemies, may pass the time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us, that in all perils and dangers of the night, for the love of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We're not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you've given us and for all the blessings we have received at your hands. And above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us and that we may show our thankfulness, not only in words, but in the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and those things which for unworthiness we dare not and our blindness we cannot ask. Grant us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. So preserve us, Lord, while waking. Guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And we say together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen.